Welcome back to New Amsterdam Radio, the podcast for creators. It is I, the mayor of Little Boys, hanging in the mayor's office with people who are doing the thing. And my guest today is doing the thing all day, every day. A fashion designer over a decade of years of experience is doing big things and has a brand new collection he wants to talk to about. Please welcome Madam K, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hi, everyone. How are you? I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you so much for the lovely introduction. Um, well, thank you. So yes, I have come out with a new uh, lingerie uh, EDM line. I'm really excited about it. Um, everything is going to be available starting in two days. We did a little pre-launch. We completely sold out. So that was really amazing. Amen to that. And especially during these hard times of COVID, you know, to start up a new line or a new business or anything like that, you know, it's it's pretty difficult. So I'm really proud of myself. So I'm like, yay, a little party time. By the way, guys, I'm not drinking. I'm having water for now, but I will be drinking after. <laughs> <laughs> uh, just, to just to clarify. That's but it is COVID and, and drinking is still allowed. Right. It, it absolutely is. So let's talk about it. For someone who's not really in that scene, what is EDM inspired <laughs> lingerie? In that scene. I don't look, why? Because I have blonde hair. I'm not in the EDM scene. No, I mean the lingerie right. wearing scene. Yeah, I'm always at all the festivals in my VIP chair with my champagne. I don't even wear I, lingerie. I, That's I, the state I met. I'm sitting far at a distance. <laughs> I, I met lingerie. I don't wear lingerie. lingerie. So what do you mean with my lingerie? What do you want to talk about? What, what does it mean to have lingerie inspired by EDM culture? <laughs> so basically, you know, EDM is kind of like, for those who don't know what that is, it's electronic dance music, you know. And so rock and roll's fading. R&B's fading and everyone's like using all these types of beats like you know everyone's you know DJing everyone's mix and matching and remixes so it's kind of the new thing you know like this is this is what the future holds it's like Tesla soon our cars are going to drive themselves mm -hmm. okay. you know what I mean so our future is basically we will have rap and R&B but it, there will be a little electronic in it it's already happening you don't really even realize it when's the last time you listened to a song with a real instrument uh, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. it's gonna be so, <laughs> yeah. like, let's just all be honest here. So, this is gonna be the future after this whole COVID thing. It's you know, electronic dance music teaching, it's it's the future. So, as a lingerie designer, I've always dressed celebrities and done one off couture pieces. You know, I've done the 1.5 million dollar bra, I've done like pearl thongs for thirty thousand dollars, I've done ruby bras. I've custom made shit for princesses and for royalty and celebrities. And I finally just decided, I, I met someone who was really sweet, this guy, he worked at EDM and he was like, you know, you're really talented. Have you ever thought about doing mass marketing? And I was like, uh, not really my thing. I'm French, I'm from Paris, you know, like, bonjour, you know, I'm just gonna smoke my cigarettes and act like I'm so important. No, so literally he convinced me. He was like, okay, you know, you can go into the mass market. So I, I did. So I have a few pieces here next to me, which I'm going to show you. Yeah. Um, men, uh, you know, don't get too excited because, you know, <laughs> we'll all be available. Some are nine pieces are available at www.medalkq.com. But in two days, everything will be available. So please go and shop for your girlfriend, for your wife, for your mistress, and for your significant other. Because yeah. everyone in my world well let's take a look at what you have for us today uh and in the meantime what was the inspiration between each piece if you don't mind me asking oh my god there's really you know what i'm one of those designers i just draw i oh, just, just feel one just draw you know i studied in paris at s mode and then i went and did my master's in china so this one is the um bow me up one this is really cute Oh yeah. You can I actually tested this. You can actually jump in the air. There's padding. There's underwire ladies. Um, there's the back of it. So you can see the padding, the boning structure and everything. So really it holds you up. It's sparkly. I love this because it's just like the glitter glows in the dark. It's just so much fun. Here's the underwear that goes. It's actually a set that you can buy right now. It's it's um $99. Um and we just ship it. You get it in two days. It's available yeah. now on my website or on my Instagram. So my Instagram for most of you guys that don't know it is Madam Methven. So it's M A D A M E and then Methven M E T H V E N. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys can go onto my shop and just buy it. So this is the back of it, which I love. So it's very like cheeky. So it's a thong. And the oh, front yeah. is very simple. And you guys can see a whole photo shoot there. You got the um, bow in front there too. That's kind of nice. Yeah, I love 
sparkles. I feel like, like, you know, I was very into like diamonds and rubies and all of that. So I said, okay, I obviously can't do that with the mass market. So what can I do that's like really shiny and obnoxious, you know? <laughs> Bling everything out so I shine a mile away. Yeah. That's what every girl wants to do when we go to a festival. And, you know, even if we're not going to a festival, even if it's just like dinner or a date or, you know, a business meeting, for example, Here's this one. This one's like really cute. I love this. I love this. Is my razzle dazzle corsets. Um, I was texting Steve Aoki and I was like, Steve, what do you think of this? Can I wear this to your next show? Wow. This with like some black business like pants suits and like a like a black jacket, like a blazer. You can yeah. wear it at this meeting. That's true. It's easy. It's fun. It's cute. And if you want to get like a little bit more hardcore, you know, and that's cool. The tease to please dominatrix, which is my favorite, you know. Okay, yeah, that's was that yeah. patent leather. So yes, and it's got full support boating. You can jump up and down. You can wash it as many times as you want. Yes, it's a latex. So th there so is a this one is eighty nine. Uh, this one is eighty nine ninety nine. So uh -huh. you can buy this. So. Pretty good fry, and it comes as a set. So, and then in the back, of course, it's a tanga because everyone loves to twerk. You know, that's like the new thing. <laughs> I mean, everyone besides myself, I don't, I don't want a twerking fan. Can you twerk? No, I can't. You can't twerk. Okay, then you and I can join the non twerking club. <laughs> I mean, yeah. distances can twerk. They literally get on the floor when they're stressed. And they start twerking. I don't know why. It's like a younger generation thing. I'm like, what are you doing? You know, they're absolutely like, twerking. I'm getting energy out and I'm like, okay, so is that like me when I have a glass of wine, you twerk and I, all right, got it. That's so, essentially it. Yeah, 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 there's a whole thing about it. I I heard they're cutting down OnlyFans too, right? Yeah, so I actually was looking that's into that. That's, that's an interesting topic too, besides my <laughs> lingerie. I mean, for all the OnlyFans people as well. Right, yeah, nudes are allowed on OnlyFans. <laughs> So, so the new collection is coming out soon. Uh, well, you said a couple of days, and and well, we're looking. There are twenty nine pieces that are already ready. They're, it's live right now. You can go grab it, and then in two days, there's going to be about thirty pieces live, ready to buy. Oh, fantastic! And I like, know. is it a seasonal collection, or is it something that's going to be its own line? So this is this is going to be for the fall collection. Okay, yeah, and and so when you are bringing up this thing, because no one's really done this before, it's like uncharted territory, you yeah. know? Yeah, so back to that story, they're like, okay, well, how are we gonna mix this with this? And I kind of like looked up some competitors and some people, and I was like, well, this is trash, this is trash. I'm like, you definitely cannot wear that. Like, girls are putting stars on their nipples and, and fishnet stockings and like neon yellow thongs. I'm like, okay, all of this needs to go. All this right. not look couture. It's like if you're gonna rent, if you're gonna pay all this money for a villa, if you're gonna pay all this money for tickets, if you're gonna pay all this money for like to go to you know with your friends and fly out, you might as well pay a hundred dollars and look good and rave correctly. Absolutely. You know, I mean that's ridiculous. That's like me going on my honeymoon and not bringing lingerie. Right. I know. Do you imagine? I, well, actually, I, 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 my honeymoon. That's like you're gonna be good in my honeymoon and, and, and just saying um and just saying um everything's off. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh that's different. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's different. Yeah. That's that's way different. But that tasty, it's always good, but there, it's always nice to have a little tease to please. So I mean we also have some regular like clothes that you know you can wear out in the day-to-day -day basis. Like I love this jacket. Um it's so much fun. So it's black and it's white and it's sequins. Yeah. It's like, like a for, for a jacket. I really love this one. And then we have as well um, this one. I wore this on a billboard on Sunset, literally with a thong, and I got so many followers for this. <laughs> I do it again. I just think that. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on. So so you're on Sunset wearing that, and you had your Instagram handles hanging out? Like, next yeah, year? I did. I was like, Madam Camp, Madam Buffett, coming soon. It was like last year, and then COVID shut down all the events. I was like, shit. Right. For that billboard it's like damn yeah. but this is like really cute and i wore it this matching thong and then that was that was like just you can wear this to a rave and some boots and you're ready to go and mm -hmm. that costs you literally like nothing so i'm making like couture wear everything under a hundred dollars 
That that's awesome price point. Uh, you know why? Because you 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 go to festivals, you get re like really high, you have fun, you drink, whatever, and then the, by the time you get out by day three, it's like it's kind of like oh, this is cut, this is my hair needs washing. So it's kind of like to a price point of where it's like if you want to save it, you can save it, but it's like a Halloween costume where it's like okay, I ruined it overnight, we can toss it. Right, right, right. I've been there. Halloween costumes when I was. A police officer and a firefighter and then some of them that i wore i was like okay it is time to go <laughs> right, right. So, yeah you you had mentioned uh covid and i know that affected everyone's business but how did that affect yours this rollout this launch this your brand building how's that really made the change the game for you well as you can tell i'm doing everything virtual like podcasts and you know i'm doing a marketing technique um that's a little different obviously because you know I can't do pop-ups and, you know, I'm gifting influencers. Um, so if you are an influencer with over a million followers, mm -hmm. and you would love to wear some Meta uh, please DM me. Um, but anyways, yeah, just really just, um, just, just doing it virtually. And it's just, it's been hard, but you know what? That's, this is the game we have to play. You know what I mean? It's like, what are we going to do? Sit at home all day? I mean, all right, mm -hmm. no, but it's not the end of the world, you know? It's right. like we have to move forward, you know. So, so when you, you go, we have to beat around the bush. And for those of you guys that don't know that expression, because it's an old one, it means <laughs> you gotta find a way to figure it out. The, any possibility in the world, right? So we're gonna make it happen. With with Madam K, there's no no, there's no maybe, there's no possibility. It happens. It's going to happen. And if it doesn't happen, then then someone's in trouble. <laughs> well, you consider yourself a hands-on creator, right? I, I would assume that. That's safe to say. You get yourself involved in every part of the process. Oh, my God. I feel like I'm the COO, the CEO, the CFO. I feel like I'm the designer. I feel like I'm the housekeeper. I'm, the, I'm, every, I'm everyone. I'm the model. I'm, I'm, the, I'm the creative director. I'm everyone. Yeah, and, and that must have been a bit of a... Team. I have a whole team, but they, they really don't like me because I come in and then I just go... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, D did that change with the whole virtual thing? I mean, is it the same impact? Like, sending an email, <laughs> send. I have my, some people that work for me virtually, and mm -hmm. it, it's it's a little weird. But the, uh, most of my team is based in LA. My factories are in Europe. Um, my headquarters are New York, and then LA. We have our warehouses, so it's. I mean, we're yeah. a little spread out everywhere, and I mean, it's great in a way, but it's kind of like. I don't know. It, it's a little difficult to be like, hey, how are you doing? So today, you know, we're going to talk about, we need to add this and this on the website, this on this on the collection. Do you, can you see this material? And it's kind of like, can you please just DHL it over, overnight it? Because I can't right. really see it. And right. I'm really a perfectionist where I really want the best quality for my clients and anyone buying uh, Madden Gray. And so it's really important to me that comfort is definitely important women empowerment and they feel sexy and really good in their bodies, you know, and that they can rave all day and mad and K with no problems at all. You know, yeah. nothing tears apart. I mean, it's, this is, I literally tested this myself millions of times. I mean, you can literally jump for three days nonstop. Nothing will break. You can throw it in the wash a hundred times. It glows in the dark. It does everything. You're yeah. good to go. <laughs> So with so many hats, I mean, what makes something fun? Like, at what part you kind of like? Oh, this is this is. I feel the spark, the warm and fuzzies. Is it the operation stuff? Is it the drawing? Is it the approving the final this design? Is warm and fuzzy with me. <laughs> I'm so there's, sorry. There's warm and fuzzy because I got a fuzzy pillow behind me. There's no warm and fuzzy. Oh no, that's terrible. A fuzzy, a fuzzy warm place. Yeah. Fashion. There's no fuzziness. Right. If you, want, if you want some fuzziness, go work in a in a go be a therapist. Come okay. On, are you okay? How are you doing today? No, no, it's a therapist. But I'm not a fuzzy person. Look, I come in, I design, I think business. I'm like, what does my audience want? What do the girls want? What will make them happy? What will make EDM happy? What will make the DJs happy? What will make everyone's experience happy? I do the job, I get it done, I sell it. I move on to the next collection. Yeah. Do you, with okay. the rock. Maybe, maybe there's a glass of champagne at the end. <laughs> of course. Yeah. Hey, champagne is a problem. I love champagne, you know? I, well, I do too. I'm a champagne girl. No, <laughs> my team is very spoiled. They go out with me everywhere. They always come to all the red carpets. They travel with me everywhere. I'm a good boss. 
You know, they take advantage of me sometimes. Okay. And I'm too nice, actually. <laughs> Wait, you're too nice and you're cold and you're not warm and fuzzy, but you're too nice. How does that? I'm too nice. I'm just too nice. <laughs> it's kind of like, you know, that mom that's like, pack your bags. We're leaving now. We gotta go now. By the way, we have to go to dinners right now at the Ivy. <laughs> Order me the bottle of champagne. Get a car. Do this. Like, I was of like, course. Oh, if I was like, how are you feeling today? I really don't care. Ah, I got gotcha. you. I understand. Uh, about your creative endeavor, it, with the rise of, of things like YouTube University, there are a lot of self-taught, self-practitioners uh, of any yeah, craft, including that. yours. How do you reconcile that? I mean, you've been doing this for a long time. You've been doing it at a high level for a long time. Is that considered a threat? Is that considered a lab of the future? How do you uh, reconcile with this new crop of those who learn self-made stuff? There are the OGs that have done this for a very long time, and that je suis française, donc je j'étudie en France. And then there are people that have to re-update their careers at a certain point in their life. And I understand that sometimes you want to change, you know what I mean? Or sometimes you want to teach people some things, you know. Um, I've seen some of the master classes, and I think they're kind of brilliant. Some of them, and I've actually said I actually want to learn that, you know what I mean? Um, yeah. so. I really, I just think it's a thing you do, you know? I don't think anything more of it. I mean, they're just teaching an audience basically their craft. Yeah. Why would that be threatening to me when I already know my craft? Sure. I'm yeah. already a five-star award-winning designer, so all that would do for me is, I think it's actually quite nice what they're doing. I'm more a philanthropist or an activist. I work more with charities. So instead of me giving back my craft, I give back and helping people in other ways. So I think this is more of a feeling of like Paul Rudd, for example, when he did the whole drag race and everything, he's showing everyone, which I'm a big supporter of LGBTQ, you know? Mm -hmm. um, um, I have even my own plur charity, and last year I raised a million dollars for them. You know, that's my way of giving back. You know, Paul, he made a class for them of, of, how, of how to glam and how to be the best, the, the best transgender possible, you know what I mean? Um, and I think that's something where it's either choose to do it or not. Maybe you gave me an idea. Maybe I'll do it now. Who knows? Yeah. Maybe yeah. you'll have Madam K. Let's rave all day. Take my class. Let's not play. I will say that this is one of the more compelling interviews I've had in a while. So I'll definitely watch <laughs> whatever it is you're teaching. I'll definitely right, guys, give it a try. Take, take the whip. Take the whip. Take the whip. here. Different kind of class. A little, higher, a little higher. No, a little lower. Right there. You walk into the lingerie. Now listen. When you take off the bra, you really got to go like dun 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 and dun, dun dun. Get the show. No, yeah, no, that's not. <laughs> um, if I was in class, it would probably be mostly like on drawing. Um, how how I draw, what brings my inspirations, and in, how do I get started my creative process. I mean, most people start off uh, either with an object or a mood board, or they either have a, a word in place. Um, um, it could be a word like, uh, um, I, don't, I don't know, uh, infectious or, or um, um, miraculous, or it could be uh, majestic. Uh, and then from there they start a mood board or it can go opposite. First they start off by, you know, testing the, testing, they go out, they, they get the textiles. They're like, oh my God, I love this fabric. I love this, you know? So every designer really has a different creative process. So I'm more of the one where I kind of, I literally will go out. I'm, I'm a mix and match, to be honest. I, I I create all day, so it doesn't make sense. It's like I created this skirt, so this is a lot of fun. I wore this like on my last po podcast. Yeah. It's a see through skirt you can wear like with my body suits, and it's oh, nice. really easy. You can wear it with leggings even to the office or whatever. And then five minutes later, I made this one. Oh Which, wow! Yeah, literally five minutes later. So it was like a. And, this is also all um, $9.99. It's like easy, it's flowy, it's fun, it's fluffy, it's, there you go, it's fluffy. It's fluffy, it's fun, it's you know, it's got that, it's got that cute little diamond yeah. to it. And um, so, you know, my creative process could be from literally, I'm drawing one second to the next moment. I'm out looking at textiles. From one moment, someone will say a word, I'll be like, oh my God, that's such a great idea. 
So someone said coquette to me, and I was like, I'm gonna start my own magazine. So now like I'm starting a magazine, which is probably gonna come out like early of 2022. Wow, that's yeah. great. So the, yeah. literally the word just triggered me, just like that. Yeah. Like, okay, I'm inspired, let's do it. And yeah. then like, like when I changed my name, like when I changed my name legally from Kayla to Kayla, so from K-A-I-L-A to K-A, from to K apostrophe L-A, um, and literally it, 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 it inspired me to do like, to do like a little song. It's like, it's, and I, it started singing like, it's K with an apostrophe L-A. Oh, like, I don't know, really cute like that, maybe when you log into the site, I don't know. Yeah. Not my voice. Cause I'm just, voice. just send the raw files to Sammy Oki. He'll figure it out. Just yeah, I was just like, hey, it's K with an apostrophe L-A. <laughs> yeah, something cute like that. Yeah. So, yeah just do, 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 do whatever you guys do. And I'll just stick some girls in some pretty underwear, some hot influencers. We'll get to go. And yeah. everyone will be singing it five minutes later. Real quick, how long does it take you to get ready in the morning? Are, are, do you have things planned the night before? Or do you get up and go, today's the day I try something special? Like, what's the. I don't like this. Okay, for sure. So you don't get ready. Just like, roll out of bed, stand up straight. Just yeah. off, go to work. Everyone asks me that. They're like, do you just yeah. like, wake up and look good? I'm like, yeah, I take care yeah. of myself. Respect. A lot like, of hydration. Uh, a lot. I drink like four bottles of water a day. I work out two hours a day. I um I, like trying to get vegan. <laughs> so I'm plant-based. Um, mm -hmm. I stay away from carbs. So, you know, stay with my greens and just being healthy and taking care of yourself and your body. And just remember that your body is a temple and like, you know, when we should really respect that, you know, and celebrate it. That's what really got me into lingerie is celebrating my body, my beauty and my curves and feeling that empowerment and that sensuality that I want to share with my significant other. It's like a really great moment, you know, or whether it's to just like go party and rave, it's just something really great. Yeah. What was the first time you felt completely sexy to control your body wearing lingerie? Do you remember the time? Do you remember the yeah. experience? Yeah, I was 18 and I popped boobs. Oh, well, that yeah, that will do it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so <laughs> before we... You don't need to buy boobs to... Uh, you don't need to buy boobs to look sexy for the woman who don't. Um, you know, it, it... I honestly started feeling really feminine probably around 16. Mm -hmm. and that was the first time my boyfriend got lingerie for me, so... That's how it all kind of started. Which sounds cool at my age, but it must have been awkward being 16 years old getting underwear from another from a guy or no? No, that's my boyfriend. Oh, uh, okay. I just I still feel like guys we're, will figure it out. France, okay, we're in France. Let's oh, see. say no more, and fam. We're in France. <laughs> we're drinking wine. He bought got it, got it. And I'm like, oh my God, what is this? And I, I this is the first time I ever put on lingerie. And I was like, how does this corset work? How, how does... How does yeah. this work? And like the gloves and everything was going on. And I was like, with the choker necklace, I was like, and I looked at myself and I was like, damn, girl, you're fine. Yeah. And, I was like, and that's what really got me into it. So then I ended up going to S mode and I did fashion design for three years. And then I got my master's of arts in Shanghai. And then I did my um, MBA in luxury brand management at Polymoto Versace, Florence, Italy. Then I worked for Vogue in New York uh, after that. And then I came to LA and started my own little atelier. And then it kind of grew from there. And then I started dressing celebrities. And now I'm kind of hitting the mass market now. I thought I was about to say, 16-year-old boys in America only go to Target or Walmart. So it was not going to hit the same way. That's no, why I'm glad I was. boys in America go like this, Tinder swipe. Boom. Right. <laughs> well, we're talking about this okay, before. That didn't exist. So they would actually have to come up and ask for your number. And I thought yeah. those were good old days. Kind of is. I mean, I, you know, I thought that was really charming. And I think we should have more of that because I think that social media, as great as it is, let's talk about it for a second. Let's do it. As great as it is, I feel like it's taken away so much communication and human communication. Because I know that when I fly to Europe or to Greece or, you know, Paris or whatever, I go sit in a bar alone. I know that, you know, I'll start chatting with people or in London or whatever, or I'll be, I'll be on a plane ride or a train um, off to the south of Italy and people will just start talking to me. Um, I feel like in American culture, it's a little different. I feel like people are more reserved uh, because we have so many apps now and so many different ways, like there's Snapchat. I don't even know, even know mm -hmm. how to work that. I've never even downloaded it. There's TikTok, 
where we dance for like five minutes or whatever, 15 seconds, and you getting like what, $100 million now? Pretty um, much, yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's a career. I, I mean, I kind of went to school and had to get up every day and did my dues. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm just amazed. And I feel like there's no law of attraction where there's an energy. So let's just say you and I were to go out uh, to have a drink. I don't think anyone would come up and talk to us, you know, as they would if we, you and I were in New York. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little different. I feel like LA is very, it's a very spread out place. I feel that everyone is each to themselves. Um, and I feel like social media has really gotten to us. And I feel like it would be really, this is why I love EDM is because it doesn't matter what culture, it doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter what 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 you represent yourself sexually as or what career you have. You are accepted into a community where everyone loves everyone and there isn't any any type of social media. It's all about enjoying the music, the presence and being there. Um, I don't know for those of you who have read The Power of Now, it's a great book, I highly suggest it. And it, it it's kind of just like that. You're in the moment, present, listening to the music with your friends, having a good time, and you're looking good with Madam K, you know? So that's what's yeah. really important. <laughs> so, so before before you went on uh, the air, we were talking about that sometimes people call you the KFC girl, and we decided it says for Kayla's fucking cool. Uh, what, what, how? I mean, I see that now. Yeah, yeah. fucking cool. Yeah. I'm yeah. fucking cool, and I'm not fluffy. Right. What's wrong? <laughs> But my chicken what? is fluffy. How about that? Okay, but what, so what else? A fluffy chicken or fluffy mashed potatoes. Like, let me just tell you, everyone. So, my breasts are bronzed and very well done. Okay, because I like dark meat. So, okay, it's yes. very well done. My thighs are nice and juicy. My gravy is just delicious. My butter is miraculous. So, I mean, you guys, just, just go have some KFC. Honestly, it's great, but I'd really rather prefer that you really go check out my website and my talent of what I actually do for a living, not a name I was given by the press, and actually see what I do and, like, check it out and actually, like, really enjoy yourselves and your body and just celebrate life in your lingerie and have, like, a good night with your boyfriend. Pour some wine. Turn on some music. Go out for dinner, even though we're still wearing masks and it's mandated in L.A., so... <sighs> it's just what, crazy times right now. What does Kayla want to do in 2021 and beyond? What what is what is left to be done? I um, am raising a hundred million dollars for sexually harassed victims. Um, I call them survivors. Not I say that it's um, I say you're the survivor. You're not the victim. That's the hashtag. And um, I'm going to um, I'm going to travel and give back hopefully by 2023 24 i've reached my goal i would like to travel and do um speeches out to all the charities you know all the businesses all the shelters for that support people that have been like verbally sexually mentally harassed sex you know and i want to be there to take care of this because i feel like it's something that a lot of celebrities and public speakers don't talk about and I'm like, why? Why? Why is that? And this is kind of weird coming from a lingerie designer to do this, right? You're probably saying, like, why is that? And it's just because I feel like I I like to hit, I'm very passionate about giving back. And I've heard, you know, stories and I'm very touched by it. And I I want I want people to feel that no matter what could happen in life, there is always a door and a key. There is always a way out. You're never in a hole because I've been in a million holes. And it's not just because they say, oh, KFC Air, she's great. She's got money. She's good to go. No, no, sweetie. No, no. Complete mm -hmm. opposite. It's anxiety. It's it's literally people are on your back 24-7. There are some really mean haters out there. Uh, people look at you differently. Men look at you differently. It's hard to date. It's hard to live. It's, it's a different lifestyle. It is. It's not like you can just... Just walk out and be like, hey guys, you know, like, yeah, hey, yeah. nice to meet you. No, people will literally look at you differently. And you, They will literally say, she's a dollar sign, you know, and they don't treat you the way you want to be treated. And it's kind of sucks. So, and the worst part is, is like, I give all my money away to charities. 
And I like to equally do it. Like I was just on the phone with a children's LA hospital and I just invited them to my birthday, you know, cause I said, look, I want to raise money and vow to always be a part of this, you know, for the children's gala, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm always doing something left and right. You know, I'm always giving back. I always feel like that's the most important thing in life, you know, to give back. And the most of the reason I give back to women and, 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 and concentrate on the lingerie community is what most people don't know about me is when I was young, I was teased a lot. Um, I was, I was teased a lot in, um, in high school. I was definitely not the cool kid. Everyone made fun of me because I was really creative. I would always put sparkles everywhere, like on my backpacks and my notebooks and I had severe acne, severe buck teeth, uh, a little, I was like a little chubby kid. And, you know, I, I was just going through it and no one liked me, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, it was hard. I was I was bullied, you know, and I take bullying like really serious. That's something else I'm gonna be working on as well. And I just do it one step at a time, you know. Like I was literally talking to my accountant during COVID. I was like, okay, I'm gonna go to Hades and build schools. And he goes, uh, no, you're not. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, and, and you know, like, and I don't think a lot of people know that soft spot about me. Everyone's like, oh, she's just like, you know, she's just one of those heiresses, a raging bitch. No one really cares, you know. She's got everything she wants. It's like. No, I don't have everything mm -hmm. I want because I would be married right now with kids and have a have a great life right now and blah blah blah. I, you know that is a dream of mine, but I do right. have a very blessed life. I have a roof over my head. I have food in my stomach, and amen. You know, like that's yeah. all me. And I, there is the soft side to me where, like, I've gone through stuff. You know, my mom has you know passed away at a very young age due to certain circumstances that she was not psychologically well. She was ill. You know. She committed suicide. I met my father. I never met him. I met him at the age of 14. You know, I flew out two days after her funeral and I never met him. And he was Muslim, like, like a practicing Muslim, you know, and we're nine people living in a, in a one bedroom apartment where I slept on the kitchen floor. I worked like over 20 different jobs. I worked, people, most people don't know this. I worked at a McDonald's. I worked at Sephora. I worked at Mac. I was a tutor. I was a housekeeper. I, I worked at a, like at a boulangerie, you know, at five in the morning. I was literally dedicating over just to get to school every day to get back over like three hours of train rides. You yeah. know, I paid for my own university. You know, I, I, people, most people don't know that because I wasn't approved to get paid by anyone else. So I paid for it. A lot of people think, Everything was handed to me. It's like, no, I had a thousand doors shut on me right in the beginning, just like everyone else did, you know? Yeah. yeah. And and it's very easy for some a lesser person to become bitter, but you decided to keep going and now you give back as well. So yeah, that's always great. Yeah, doors shut on me and that happens a hundred times. A lot of people shut the door on me and I'm just like, okay, that's fine. That's not a problem. And that's okay because they missed out, you know, at the end of the day. But it never stopped me. And that's something also really important for everyone out there. Don't ever stop believing in yourself. Don't let anyone ever tell you you're not good enough. Don't let anyone tell you anything otherwise. If you think that you deserve it, if you know you deserve it, if you manifest it, and if you give your all and your blood and your sweat and your tears like I have, and I still do every single day, I wake up and that is all I do is I pray to God and I just, I just give everything I have, every single thing to just my creations of my lingerie and to help people. And whatever your dream is out there, do not give up. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. I've had thousands of people tell me millions of things, critical things, things that would really, really mess you up in the head, really me. And every day I've gotten up and I've said, no, you know what, I'm stronger than this. I'm gonna march right up and I'm gonna finish the job no matter what. And I'm gonna get to my goal. Because that's the most important thing, is us reaching our goals and I know it's hard during COVID and I know everyone is suffering and I know we are in pain and I know America's hurting and I know the world is hurting and I know that right now is not the best time. And I know, but let's try and make it joyous. So you know what I said? I'm gonna launch this collection to make it joyous for some people, you know? Like let's do things that will make it, you know, create a fun time because I know we're all hurting, you know? and. Don't let it stop you. Just, just keep going, keep going, keep going, no matter what. Damn, dropping the mic. Appreciate that. The line, <laughs> Madam Special K, <laughs> available now. How can people go about getting it one more time? If they want someone to find you or stalk you online, how to go about doing that? 
Oh, there's a lot of ways. Well, you can come to my address, which is no. <laughs> um, so uh, you guys can call. We have a hotline, um, which is always available. So it's eight four four Madam KQ, um, and then you can also reach me at Madam Methven on Instagram, Facebook Kayla Methven, and then also my PR is Regina Daniels and Kelly K at yahoo.com and then it's Regina Regina that yeah, Regina Daniels at yahoo.com. So you can reach any of them. Um I'm always available um on all of my platforms. I'm literally always on my phone. I have a team of people always on their phone. So we have 24 hour customer service for phone, for returns, for if if you guys don't like anything, there's a full refund. Like my clients are the most important things to me. As a hard cookie as I am, I am soft and fluffy. Also the air quotes. quotes. You got my fluffy out. Oh my God. You got my fluffy out. (laughs) I am a fluffy girl. So my clients, you know, I just want them to be happy at the end of the day because I know how important it is. Like when you buy something, you expect a certain quality and and you know, I would never want to take somebody's money if it wasn't a hundred percent assured that there's not a smile on their face. Their smile is what makes me continue what I do today. You know, it's it's to see their reactions, their cards, to get their DMs. I had a girl DM me, by the way, her name was Jenny Hill, Jenny Hillman, and um, big shout out to you. She's like, for my birthday, she's like, I'm gonna buy your collection. And she's literally been following me for years. And I have some some followers that follow me literally from Scotland. This girl was like, "No, I'm from Scotland," and they're like, "I'll literally just chat with them," and they're they're just so loyal, and they're just like, "For your birthday, I just want to buy this," and they'll send me paintings, they'll send me cards, they'll be like, "My husband loved it," that like I had the greatest time on my wedding night, and and it's just been really great just seeing it's it's my fans' reactions, not on me. I don't care about my photo shoots and all that. I mean that that shit's great too, mm-hmm. but like. The difference between a designer and a talent, if you're a real designer, you really do give a shit about your client. It's not just my face on a billboard, like, mm. mm-hmm. I mean, that's great. Like, that's wonderful. Like, it's great to, to see that. That's, you know, we all love that. But if you're a real serious designer, you'll notice you're not exactly the talent. They are the talent, not me. You are. 